right folks, Matt Wagner with InSource Renewables here in Pittsfield. We're going to uh, do a quick little video today on how to go through cleaning your heat pump. This is just your basic uh, homeowner maintenance. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is if you have a remote control or a wall control, uh, we're just going to power the unit off with the big orange button and uh, shut her down and just give it a minute uh, for that indoor unit for the hood uh, to come down. If you do have one with a hood, some don't. Once the hood to the unit has come down, what you'll find, we'll have Ben zoom in here, is there's a little clip, a button that can be pushed on both sides. And it is a little bit, you know, a little bit of a coarse push. Uh, so do just do it with your fingers. Don't push any like don't use a screwdriver or push anything in uh, into the unit that could damage the unit. Uh, it will open up. You get a good picture of that that clip there, Ben. Yep. And we'll open up the hood over here on our right hand side. I call the kickstand. This little orange kickstand will pop up. Just clip that up and let the hood hood lie there. Now what we see inside are what we call the intake screens on the left and the right. And we'll just go ahead and take those out. As you can see, ours aren't very dirty. Um, they don't necessarily need cleaning, but we're going to go through that process anyway. Uh, so we'll just pull those out. Alright folks, up here under the hood you'll also see you've got two small filters in on each side. Now the bluish one is uh, an ion filter that basically just neutralizes odors in the air. And that one lasts about three years before it's uh, deemed to be expired uh, by the manufacturer. So that's the ion filter, is the bluish one. Alright, we got the uh, ion filter out. And now we'll take the apple catechin filter out. Uh, this filter has a life expectancy of 3 to 12 months. It's really based on uh, how heavily you use the unit. If it runs continuously all the time, you know, it could be replaced every 3 months theoretically. Um, it does uh, neutralize dust, uh, mold, spores, and some bacteria. Um, remember these units do have somewhat of a history in the hotel uh, motel industry where things like neutralizing the odors of the person that stayed in your room before you or killing unwanted germs uh, would be an asset. They are, however, uh, unnecessary. You do not have to have them uh, in the unit and they don't affect heating or cooling performance. In fact, um, they do block some airflow and it does state in your manual that they may actually reduce the performance uh, of your unit, uh, only modestly. Um, other than by keeping track of hours, there's really no, no way to tell when they need to be replaced other than when they're obviously uh, physically uh, worn out. Also, if you are replacing them, it doesn't matter which side they go on, so you can put either filter on either side. That's totally fine. So now we've got those out, and we'll take the screens down to the washroom, and uh, we'll show you how to wash those out. Brown chicken, brown cow, here we are in the washroom. And so what we're going to do is we're going to wash one of these screens in the sink uh, with a little bit of warm water. Uh, and we're gonna, then we're going to go back to the office and we're going to show you how to uh, wash one out, uh, clean one out with a vacuum cleaner. Again, you'll see uh, if you do have dirty screens, they obviously look a lot dirtier than this. Uh, this one's fairly clean. So as you're holding the screen, you'll see it, it fits into the unit. Uh, with the outside of the curve uh, on the outside and this would be the back side so air is traveling through the unit it's sticking to the front so we want to wash it um, actually by running water through the back so what we'll do and I never never use like a harsh brush or a screen or anything this is fairly fragile you don't need to use like a Brillo pad or a scotch Bright pad or anything um, get some warm water going here and so what I do is I just would run water through and use my hand on the back side like that. Sink's a little bit small for this, but 
just by running water through and rubbing rubbing the uh, front, it should remove all the dust. Shouldn't require too much, obviously. If you see a spot that's bad, uh, we'll just give it a little extra. All right. And that's really all there is to that. So here what we have, here's another, the other filter off of the other side, the air screen. Um, so most people have an uh, attachment, like a soft bristled brush like this for their vacuum cleaner. Uh, and again, you know, the outside, uh, I think has a natural bend to it. The outside of the filter is the part we're going to clean. So um, in this case, I can just brush it off because it's not that, clean, not that dirty. Uh, so we're really only doing this for the sake of demonstration. We've obviously been in customers' houses where they had forgotten to clean these for a long period of time and maybe had even called to say they didn't believe the unit was working correctly. And when we open the hood, what we find is this screen is completely covered in dust uh, or, you know, pet fur or anything uh, that can become airborne would be drawn into this screen and block airflow into the unit, which obviously restricts uh, heat or cooling uh, coming back out of the unit, um, which, you know, sometimes people will call us with that. Um, so the idea here is that we uh, prevent some costs being incurred by our customers. So now I'm going to go over how to reinstall these air screens. Also, if you do find you've got like a heavy film buildup of something that you can't get off, um, these are all nylon, so don't, don't do anything to scrub them aggressively, uh, but you may find it necessary to maybe use a product like Simple Green uh, that would cut like any oil or grease that might be on there, say if units close to your kitchen. Uh, you might have a buildup like that that won't just come off with a little bit of soap. Um, so just let it sit and, uh, and rinse it off. It should all come clear. If you do damage one, do not you'd run the unit uh, without the screens in place. Um, <clears throat> Just give us a call, we'll get you a new set. I'm going to put the Apple Catechin filter back on the right hand side and the Ion filter up on the left hand side. And they just get pressed in behind these little tabs just like that. Now if for some reason you want, didn't want them on that side because yours were originally installed the other way, just go ahead and uh, install them the other way. You know. Whatever makes you feel good, it doesn't really matter. Whatever makes you happy. For me, I like the catechin filter on, on the left hand side. So when you push these up in, You'll see they follow that little track, it's kind of hard to mess it up. And then these little tabs down here at the bottom, uh, you'll see those just kind of sit right in there and that's all they do. There's no audible click or anything, they just kind of tuck in and snap down a little bit. Alright, so now we've replaced our ion filter, our catechin filter, and we've recovered the unit with the screens. Now to close the hood, uh, ben can zoom right in. There is directions written right here. Uh, can you read this? When closing the intake grill, press at point A, which is on the left hand side, and point C, which is on the right hand side. And then I find that typically just point B almost just clicks in uh, on its own. Sometimes you don't even notice it. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'll pick the hood up. I'll tuck the kickstand down and I'll push this side, this uh, hinged part up a little bit so I can hold my hand in here. Now with my hand on the left hand side you'll hear it click in on point A. Alright, and we'll do the same thing on point C on the right hand side. And then on point B you may not even hear it. A little bit, okay. So now you'll see that the hood is, is held up on its own. 
uh, as a result of the way we reinstalled it. And that's fine. Once you turn the unit uh, back on, uh, it'll just go back to its normal position. So if I turn the unit on now, it'll come on and run. Another issue that we see frequently is that if the cover isn't completely closed, uh, the unit will throw an error code. So I'm just going to leave this side loose as if we hadn't reinstalled it correctly and I'll turn the power back on and what you'll see is a blinking error code in your manual that actually uh, is deciphered and it'll tell you exactly what's wrong um, but you see the blinking lights up here it is an error code and it's just letting you know that you don't have the door closed uh, so I will turn it back off reach up under there, close that back up, and turn the power on, and here we go.